Hi, welcome to season one of Sexpert Talks, Healing and Empowerment Through Sexuality, Pleasure and Relationships. My name is Samra and I'm joined today by Laura Lovin. Hello, Laura. Welcome. Hi, Samra. It's a pleasure to be here. It's so it's such a pleasure to have you here. So Laura is a sex and relationship coach uh, specializing in men's sexuality and tantra. And today Laura is going to talk to us about uh, reclaiming the masculinity, about how men can reclaim their masculinity. So how can men reclaim their masculinity? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, virility, vitality, and zest for life are intimately tied to your sex drive. Your libido is your life force energy, and it informs everything you do. Um, it fuels your sense of aliveness, uh, gives you your daily energy, your creativity, your passion. Um, I mean, we have a saying in the coaching business that how you show up in the bedroom is how you show up in life. Mm -hmm. And when men learn how to tap into and harness their sexual energy, the world opens up to them. They can reclaim their power to penetrate not only in the bedroom, but also in the way that they show up in work and the way they show up in life. And you know, we think about penetration as something that happens during sex, but men also penetrate the world with their vision, their passion, their purpose, their leadership, their hearts their physicality, their strengths. So we're talking about, you know, not just changing performance in the bedroom, but the way you show up in every aspect of life. And so what I do as a part of the coaching process is I take men on an inner journey to reclaim lost aspects of self. And these are aspects that may have been wounded, um, that have been shamed, humiliated, pieces that feel unworthy, you know, that feel unlovable, and help them to reclaim these pieces and step into their wholeness. And um, as they do this, they feel increasingly more alive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the way this kind of works is that, you know, if you're a man who's lost his drive, his motivation, if you're struggling with depression, if you have issues around ED, if you felt, feel a sense of emptiness inside that no amount of external achievements or accolades or toys um, can fill, then this is the time to look inside. This is the, this is the realization that, that the external world and the way you're working in it is no longer feeding you. You know, this is the call to take the inner journey, what I call the second journey, the journey to reclaim aspects of self and come back fully alive. Beautiful, that's so powerful, amazing. <laughs> so based on your, your experience and, and in working with when, what, what are some of the reasons that men shut down in the way that you described? Yeah, um, you know, men shut down for a variety of reasons. And sometimes it, hurt, it happens early on. Sometimes it, it you know, it begins in childhood. Um, and it happens, <clears throat> sometimes it happens so slowly, you know, that, that it's, it's indiscernible. You know, you just can't detect that it's happening because it happens so slowly. But <clears throat> one of the first and foremost, one of the ways that men shut down is that they're conditioned by society not to feel. Mm. You know, men, <clears throat> men are sentient beings, just like women, you know. Um, and men are, are conditioned not to feel. And so, they carry the weight of all their unfelt emotional pain inside their bodies. And, you know, men are afraid to feel they're, because they're trained not to feel. 
And, you know, I find that at the root of that is that, you know, they're afraid to feel because they're afraid that they'll lose control. But when they don't allow themselves to feel, they actually put their feelings in the driver's seat. And these unfelt feelings get stored in their bodies and they tend to pop out in ways that are inappropriate. For instance, you know, an episode of road rage because an inattentive driver cut you off or exploding at a colleague, a loved one, a friend because of a simple uh, comment. Um, and so, you know, if you've ever found yourself in a rage and have been not quite certain how you got there, um, this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's those feelings that are yearning to be expressed and seen and acknowledged that leak out in inappropriate ways. And when, when something like this happens, it, it's, it's called getting triggered. Um, Another way that men shut down is growing up in families where they're, they were ridiculed, they were punished harshly, they were neglected, or, you know, in families where the parents didn't have very much time, didn't spend a lot of time with their children. And when you grow up in an experience like this, it leaves you feeling um, like you're unworthy, like you're unlovable, like you're broken because there's something wrong with you because your parents didn't love you in the way that you needed to be loved. Mm. Men also shut down in relationship with women. Um, I mean, a great example is all the, the repeated rejections during the dating years. Mm. I, I was talking with a man the other day that told me he asked nine women out before, you know, he finally found one who said yes. I mean, you know, what does that do to you inside to be repeatedly rejected? Um, men get contracted by having embarrassing or humiliating sexual experiences with women where, you know, maybe they, they can't perform or they can't, they can't get it up. You know, a, a woman can fake an orgasm, but a man can't fake a heart on. You know, that's tough stuff. That's tough stuff to get, get past. Uh, I think that men also get shut down in loveless marriages where, you know, they provide for their family, um, but they don't get the affection that they need to thrive. Um, and I think men get shut down very hard when they're in longstanding relationships with women who tend to be caustic, controlling, competitive, and critical. Mm -hmm. um, men also, like women, get shut down by trauma, and this can be developmental trauma. Um, it can be something that, you know, it can be developmental trauma that they experienced as a child. It can also be, you know, trauma that they experienced as an adult, um, you know, and when, it, when something happens, that we're ill-equipped to deal with be because we're a child or because, you know, and it's, it's too overwhelming for us to process these unfelt feelings instead of flowing through us get pushed beneath the surface. And the problem is, is that we carry them with us everywhere we go. Um, and I also think that men have been shut down by feminism um, in part because they've kind of been left behind, mm. um, but also because they're confused about their roles. They're confused about what women really want. I, mean, I hear that all the time in the men that I work with. Mm. And so, you know, what happens is that over time, the weight of this emotional baggage that men are carrying in their bodies impedes natural flow of energy in their bodies and it affects their health, it affects their turn on, it affects their ability to make an impact in the world. You know, it disconnects them from their hearts and it also diminishes their capacity for joy and pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the thing of it is, is that men may think that 
low motivation, low libido, chronic tension, depression, erectile dysfunction, and things like that are part of the natural aging process. Um, but it's amazing how much of this is actually a result of the unprocessed emotional baggage, the emotional pain that they're carrying in their bodies. Um, so when they learn how to set this bag of suffering down, and you know that's what we do in coaching, they start to feel liberated, you know, perhaps for the first time in their lives. It's, mm -hmm. it's really incredible. And what happens as a result of this is that the emotional and sensational flow in the body is restored. And so these um, so-called symptoms of aging just naturally resolve, they naturally disappear. And, you know, I mean, this is, it's normal to find yourself at this place in life where you realize that all of your striving for external success, for accolades, for possessions, for toys is, is not as important. It's, doesn't, it doesn't satisfy you anymore. It doesn't fill you up anymore. You know, this is a natural process of human development um, because of the way that we're trained to be in the world, to find yourself at this point. And so the trick then uh, is to, to heed the call, you know, mm -hmm. to take the journey back home to yourself. Amazing, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think that's a very um, powerful message that, that um, your virility, your zest for life doesn't have to diminish as you get older. It's just a question, as you say, of, of taking the second journey and going now deeper into yourself to, to, to reclaim it. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, so for you, what do you think in your work um, and, and for men that want to go on this journey, how important is being uh, present and what does presence actually mean? Um. It's all about presence, truly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, presence has to do with embodiment. You know, how connected are you to your body? How deeply grounded in your body are you? You know, can you feel the flow of sensations and emotions and all of the data, um, data streams in your body, your joint positions? I mean, can you really feel yourself in your body. Um, and, you know, I mean, I find that, that most men live in their heads. You know, when you ask a man what he feels, he'll usually tell you what he thinks. And, um, and, you know, and this is because of the way men have been conditioned in society. And, you know, I mean, men have developed these keen laser focused minds that have served them well up to this point in life, you know, um, but it's not enough. At this point in life, you know, you're being called to bring all of yourself to the table, not just your brilliant mind, but also your big tender heart and also your primal instinctual nature. And so this is what presence is to show up with all systems go with all systems on board, you know? And as women, you know, we want men who are present. We want men who show up, you know, not just with their brains, but with their hearts and with their strength and with their, you know, instinctual nature on board. Beautiful. And from this uh, perspective of kind of presence, uh, of a more conscious embodiment um, and this different view and acceptance of masculinity, what does it mean to have potency or what, what does potency mean in that, in that context? Yeah, my definition of potency is, um, is presence and more. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, it has to do with, sh you know, how you show up, what comes 
what comes with you? Are you showing up with your, your emotional baggage, you know, with all your fears, your insecurities, your anxieties, you know, are you, or are you showing up with your wholeness, with all your faculties on board? And to me, uh, potency is really a combination of presence, um, intention, attunement, and um, what I call the cock, heart, mind alignment. So you've got all those systems, the primal system, the limbic system, and the cortical system on board. Um, and, you know, when you show up in this way, everything changes. It's, it's like magic. I mean, not only is it a next level experience of life, um, it's incredibly liberating. And you'll find that when you show up in this way, that potency changes everything. It creates possibilities that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. And um, it allows for surpri surprisingly delightful things to happen. <laughs> Wonderful. And I think that kind of flows into the, my next question, which is, what does it then mean for a man who's gone through this journey, who's, who's accessed these parts of himself? What does it then mean when he's stepping into his power? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's, it, it, it really means that, you know, that you become your own man, you know, that you, you've taken a look at what has shaped you, you know, mm. your parents, your siblings, your teachers, peers, culture, the patriarchy, the media, religion, etc. And, you know, you become a man of your own making. And, and so, you know, how that happens is by taking this journey to reclaim your wholeness to step into your wholeness, to integrate all of these pieces of yourself that you previously pushed down or shoved away or um, felt were unacceptable and embodying your full masculine energy and you know, bringing your unique strengths, your mission, your purpose and your presence to the world. Um, and this is really where the juice lives. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's how you get back your sense of aliveness mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and it, and it's a sense of aliveness that will absolutely knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really incredibly empowering. Yeah. Um, you know, more and more women are awakening and becoming empowered and um, awakened women want men who are in their power, who have all systems online, who show up with their presence, with their intention, with their full masculine power. You know, we want men like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, together we can, we can change the world. Oh, absolutely. How much beautiful everything would, would be if we had these beautifully enlightened men in, in their power together with women who are enlightened and in their power. Beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> you, beautiful. Thank you so much. So before we wrap up, uh, please share anything else that you about this topic that you think might be interesting that you'd like to share with people listening or looking in. Um, just that you know, it's a, it's a beautiful, um, very intimate journey um, to, to, to take. It's a beautiful gift to give yourself, you know, this gift of coming back to your aliveness. And um, it's a wonderful thing to be in the presence of an awakened woman who loves men and, um, and to be able to show up with all of, with these different parts of yourself that at some point in your life that you deemed unacceptable mm -hmm. and to have those parts 
received, acknowledged, seen, and held in a loving and accepting space. You know, this is how the healing happens. It happens in relationship, you know, and this is how together we can step into our wholeness. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, because the, those vulnerable parts are actually where the, the magic happens. That's where the juiciness of everything is really. <laughs> Yeah. in these parts that yeah beautiful beautiful yeah. well thank you so much thank you so much for sharing that thank you for joining us today uh we were joined by laura lovin who was talking about um how men can reclaim their masculinity you can find her website in the comment section uh below the podcast or video depending on how you're listening or viewing this to check out um her work uh to to follow her and to find out more about the coaching programs and um her coaching work. Thank you so much again for joining us. It was such a delight to, to talk to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat>